Hi there everyone, my name is Dominic and welcome to Infineuro by Mike Klubnica. Uh, this is the guy who made um, Unsorted Horror and Buckshot Roulette and quite a few other games now that I've looked into more of what he's worked on. So I kind of been wanting to slowly, every now and then, go through his film, or not his film catalog, his game catalog rather, and pick through things and see which ones I have not played and give them a try. Because, I don't know, something about the games he's made, everything I've played so far, has fascinated me. Has just, there's something about the tone to it, something about the kind of view of these post-apocalyptic kind of environments that really fascinates me. It's a very unique kind of psychological horror that I'm curious to explore more of. So this one is called Infineural. I'm not sure what it's about, but I want to give it a shot. I think this was may have been one of his earlier projects, so I feel like it may be a little bit simpler than some of the other ones we've seen, so... Uh, but usually that's the thing. They work on these various... <laughs> I like like the the dot png photos in the in the windows of the bus. <laughs> Infineural innovative AI solutions. Oh, AI is involved. You know it's going to be something super lovely and helpful. Are we free? Where the fuck are we? That has these super pink skies. My God, that are like this is just Miami, but we're on LSD while we're doing it, so it looks a little bit more fresh. All right, let's see. I can only imagine it's gonna be something to do with them screwing up with our brains a little bit. This is not look, this is not how you greet people. I was like, what what is with the little cock torture ring here? Oh, it's a diagram of science. Excuse me. What does it say? Eternal CAPTCHA test procedure. I do not want to be eternally caught in a CAPTCHA test. That sounds awful. Um, original host, temporary host. What does it say? The original host uh, is the test subject's body, which is not deemed suitable for the test. This is due to the axiomatic lifespan of the human body. The test subject's encephalon is automatically transferred to a temporary host, which the conscious will inhabit uh, for the duration of the test. The temporary host consists of synthetic materials which will not degrade in the warp drive domain. So basically, they're transferring over our brain into a robot, you might understand. One minute equals 10 years. In the warp drive. After the test subject has taken the necessary supplements, they will enter the warp drive. <laughs> They're going to be like, here, take your calcium, and now whoosh! Good luck. The first stage of the warp drive is comprised of the host transfer. The second stage will be entering the domain where the test will finally take place. The warp drive is an excellent environment for researchers to gather data. However, the specifics are highly confidential. I wonder what they're using this for. Is the idea like... Huh. So here's an interesting concept about the whole time dilation thing with our brains, is the trade-off is... The whole one minute, ten years could be used to torture people horribly forever, basically. But also, I, I, I get what the logic behind the idea of it, at least in sci-fi, is like researchers are like, oh, this would give me ten years of time to research results of things. You know, like, like imagine if medical doctors were allowed to use this to research things. But again, it would probably fry your brain and make you go nuts. All right, can we get coffee? No, we can. Give me a cup of joe. Do you think like the uh, the nurses at a sperm bank ever say that if they have a guy named Joe drink the coffee? Sure, that's probably not drugged. If I learned anything from Fierce of Fathoms, it's that as soon as you see a suspicious looking coffee machine, drink it down. It definitely has drugs in it. Whoop! Is the test over? I don't remember a single thing. Ha! What did I say? Woo! All right. What does this say? Thank you for signing up for the Infineural Eternal Capture Program. As stated in page 987, paragraph 2 of the contract. 987 pages of contract, you know it's good. It's like when you scroll through the iTunes agreement. The coffee has an anesthetic property. The coffee has anesthetic properties. After drinking it, step into the automatic escort vehicle and relax. If you find yourself not remembering the contents of the test after it's finished, do not be alarmed. This is a side effect of the beverage. Infineural Innovative AI Solutions. Oh, I hate that so much. Give me another coffee. Or am I done? Is it a one per? The second one I just wanted is so I can sleep. Well, I'm assuming now we're still in the test. Everything's just going to be fucked up now. Who are you? Little block-headed man. Oh, hey there. I got off the test just a few minutes before you. Okay. Isn't it crazy? We're gone for five minutes, but over there it's 50 years. Warp drives really are fascinating. They are. Also, though, I didn't start this conversation. I just tried to sit here. If there were other chairs, I'd be sitting in them, and unfortunately they're not. 
I am curious about what it's like over there. I know a few people who remembered everything. They killed themselves shortly after. Well, yeah, if you were in the test and you remembered 50 years going by, returning to the real world would be insane. Well, it's like the, um, that's the whole thing in Inception, right? Um, it leaves me thinking, why do they end their lives? Is, the, is this reality nowhere near as good as the one over there? I guess we'll never find out. I think it's because you would just feel like you're old, right? Like you would just, you you would have the life experience of like an 80 year old person and then come back to being 20 or 30. And I don't think that would be much of a gift, honestly. It's with the whole idea of like, those like, what would you choose options of like, oh, would you go back to being your younger self? Um, oh, And maybe that's for the best. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, boss. I don't know. Whoa. Ending one, ignorance is bliss. You received your payment the day after. Retire, live a happy life. Oh, there's multiple endings? Oh. We still wonder, what did I get paid for? Oh, does drinking the coffee just... Is that one of the endings? Oh. I didn't even know we were supposed to be considering other options. Thank you for playing. Oh, shit. Okay, well, let me hop back in then. Because I didn't... Oh, yeah. I had no idea it was that kind of a game. So, oh, hold the fuck up then. I wonder if we don't go in there at all if we go exploring... If there's anything to look around for. Or maybe if I just don't... If I don't drink the coffee... Let's try to be methodical about this. I will order the coffee but not drink it and see if that... You know, inspires something different in the story. I don't know. Okay. Or what? Can I just go, like, sit and not do any of this? Okay, let's see. Let's see what our options are. It didn't seem like there was much in the way of choices to make, so I didn't really think anything of it. We can read the contract beforehand. We didn't do that before. Yeah, okay. So... Got the cameras. Is the camera following me? Yeah, it is. All right. All right. Grab that, and then I'm going to choose to not drink the anesthetic coffee. No. And then let's see. Oh! Oh, no! Oh, thank you! Not the spring trap. Holy shit. This is like the Five Nights at Freddy suits. Okay. Please face this way. Keep all limbs away from closing latches. Okay. Oh, this is like a Hannibal Lecter transportation. Please face this way. What happens if I don't? Okay, okay. Oh, is this like the warp drive itself? Oh god, we're gonna go into it non-sedated, so we're gonna experience the full 50 years, aren't we? I wonder, this is interesting too, because I didn't realize that like, when they give you- Oh! <laughs> Fuck, okay. Oh god, I'm gonna put a seizure warning before that shit, holy shit. That was a lot. Oh, and now we work here? God damn it, I don't want to work here. Infineural. I don't like that the name kind of just sounds like funeral, but... In funeral. Questions remaining. Nine, nine, how many? <laughs> no, no. You go home after a long day of work, but you find that your house is no, long, no longer exists. How do you react to the situation? A context. You own one house. You are a middle-class citizen. You have a wife and two children. Your family was in the house. I'd cry, because I... Like, that would be awful. I don't know why I would laugh. How do I choose it? Oh, space bar. Okay, there we go. <laughs> No, I don't want to do all the remaining questions. I really don't. Oh, my God. Eight million more questions. Okay, you are driving home on one late night when you notice an uncanny cave ent uh, entrance in the distance. What do you do? You're an experienced cave explorer. You don't have a flashy. You have a box of matches. Music can be heard coming from the entrance. I come back in the morning. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not doing that shit. 
I don't care what experience I am. One, cave diving seems like a terrible pastime. Like, a company urges you to drink the coffee. Do you drink the coffee? The coffee makes you forget. The coffee makes you forget. The coffee makes you forget. Consult a lawyer. <laughs> no, thank you. That answers two questions. Why did I answer two questions? A stranger offers you a seat on the bus. Do you accept? Hold on. You are lonely. There are no other seats that stop. Oh, whoa, what was that last one? Oh, shit. I've gone. I've done that many questions. Three people are engaged in a fight. Who is the most likely to win? The fight is in a bar. Person one has a knife. Person two has brack knuckles. Person three has a nuclear warhead. Knife. Because the nuclear warhead guy doesn't have it ready to go. He has to go arm and turn the keys and all that. Knife guy's going to be fast with it. You're not going to have a spleen. As soon as oh, Watchdog was present in the last question. You answered incorrectly. What? What? 50,000 questions will be added to your quota. Pay more attention. I am paying attention. That's my logic. If you're old, thanks you for your cooperation. Oh, wait. Oh, this is what... Oh, this is interesting. You know what this is? I'm realizing what this is trying to get at, I feel like. At least my interpretation. Is because the whole thing is that AI is based on human experience. But the whole thing is that they're always trying to either, like, buy data from all the social media we use to train AI models to replicate being human, which is the whole concern around it. So this is the idea of they're making people come into the facility, drink this stuff, and spend five minutes, which is actually 50 years, uh, in this facility answering questions for its AI model, I'm assuming, to be able to pretend it's human. But we're doing it, and we didn't drink the coffee, so now we're having to raw dog this shit and actually do it in real time. All right, which part of the face do you look at first? Uh, the face is human. The face has freckles, two eyes. The face has no mouth. I want to go home because it's a hard knock life for me. Oh, my God. Well, also, why? I mean, context needs to tell me why it has no mouth. Which friends are more valuable to you? Love, or what's more valuable, love, money, or friends? I like the occasional existential questions dropping in. What is the first thing that comes to your mind after the word green? Terminal text. After after 9 million questions, terminal text. 100%. The saddest little... Wah, wah. Uh, go away, watchdog. Please go away. I'm, please go away. I'm so close, watchdog. <laughs> um, yeah, go away. Go away. Last one. What's it going to be? The sun drifts below the mountain, casting pink light across the sky. It's getting cold. What do you do? I think I'll go home now. If I can, please. Your quota is met. This concludes the test. Thank you for your cooperation. Fuck, that was awful. Am I allowed to... Do I have to get back in this? Oh, so this thing just literally, like, takes us into the bunker. We do this forever, and then we have to leave. Awful. Hate it. God, what a fucking nightmare. Is that it? Did we did we do what we were supposed to? <laughs> oh my fucking god! Well, that was distressing. I wonder what the guy has to say now because we were. Wait, is are we the friend he was referring to that went into it and remembered everything? I'm realizing we did not take his advice when he was like, "Yeah, I had a friend who remembered all 50 years. They killed themselves." Hey, buddy, pal, what are you doing here? Do you work here? If you knew so much, you could have warned me before I went into that hellhole. Oh, hey there. I got off the test just a few minutes before you. Yeah, what? What? What's the cutoff for? What? What? Stop looking at me in silence. Am I okay? I'm not. I'm doing really not good, my man. Ending to remember. You never find your place back in society. No, not after what you went through. Right when you're done what, right when you're done tying the noose, you hear an ad on the radio. Infineural looking for volunteers. Oh shit. It would scramble your brain, wouldn't it? Like, isn't that like like it kinda it would, wouldn't it? Like, cause I'm like, 
the brain is not made for that kind of repetitive task. Like the human brain was never made for, I mean, I've seen people talk about how like the brain was never made for an office job. Like our ancestors were out on the planet hunting, gathering for all that time. And then we started to build shelter and all that and advance society a little bit. But now we've gone into where everything is digital. I mean, even this, it's weird saying that given that like everything I do is digital is I'm everything is me posting videos that you go and you watch and I make and we're all just wired into our computers. And I'm not saying that's inherently bad. Like I, I don't think fear mongering over technology is ever helpful because most of it is just humans progress in unusual ways and always seems a bit alien to previous generations. But I do think we definitely go too far with it. Like we definitely, especially now we're seeing AI being used as a way to replicate the human experience. I mean, I saw a thing and it was one of the worst Twitter takes I've ever seen in my life. And that's saying something. If you've been on Twitter, you know it's a cesspool. This guy was saying that he, and, and I was like, he was like, hear me out, kind of the tone of the post was like that. It was like, um, this, uh, AI will replace social drinking. And by that, he, I believe he was trying to suggest that AI will become so prevalent that instead of using drinking and having a drink to loosen you up to talk to other people you'll just use ai to come up with pickup lines and it'll lead the conversation you can have your little ai earpiece telling you what to say to steer the conversation how you want which sounds like a fucking nightmare i'm sorry that's part of the reality of how we engage with humans is to go how do you as a person communicate are you quirky? Are you charismatic? Are you confident? Are you off-putting? Are you shy, but you're sweet? Are you shy, but you're a dickhead? Like, all of those things are the small nuances of being human, interacting with one another that are hard to navigate, you know, but they're they're what make life interesting, you know? They're, if things are kind of algor algor algorithmic, excuse me, um, in the way we interact with one another, it's going to be a fucking nightmare. Now, I don't think most people, like, I think the fear about companies misusing this technology is relevant. I don't think the fear about it affecting humans all that much is as relevant like the day-to-day -day people because I think most people just won't want it. It's a thing that tech companies are trying to pretend everyone needs, but I don't fucking want it at all. I don't I have so much else in life that already just demands my attention that to feel like I want artificial intelligence systems dictating and suggesting what my day-to-day -day life should be, what my optimization of my day should be, is so robotic that I don't want to do that. In the same way as, like, I push back against any sort of algorithmic instincts as much as I can, which is the reason why I know things like, I guarantee you this YouTube channel would be way more successful if I didn't mix up the content that I make. If I just made pandering boyfriend ASMR over and over and over and over, and I made it every few days... And I could do that. It's an option. A lot of plenty of accounts do that. I'm guaranteed that this account will be way larger than it is. But that's not what I want to do. And that's not and I think the people, those of you who have been here the longest and have listened to me and watched me for all this time, I think you would find that really dull. I think part of why some of you are here is that you like that I try to branch out with what I do, that I have concepts for things down the road. I want to I want to change and progress what I make and how I make it as time goes on because I don't care if it's good for the YouTube algorithm. I would rather have what I have now where I have, you know, a little over 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube, but a very active community of a place where I feel like people are really plugged in. A lot of you have been here for a long enough time that there's, there's a sense of history in the community that I really appreciate as well as being a space that welcomes so many new people in regularly. And that to me, I think is very special. And I would not trade that for being hyper, hyper uh, procedural in the way I make everything and have a bunch more subscribers and followers, but have everything feel robotic, you know, to have everything feel like it's being done as a series of series of zeros and ones, you know what I mean? Like everything is part of a ploy to optimize my success faster and smoother. I don't think I would enjoy that. I think that would ring very hollow for me. And I feel like it would also build kind of a trap. People who get famous doing one singular niche thing only and don't attach their personality to it, they don't try to branch out, they don't try to take any ownership of it or vary what their creative output is, those people I think get really stuck later on because then if you want to pivot, people aren't going to stick around with you, you know? Because you haven't built a you haven't built a brand on your individual creativity. You built a brand on one specific niche of content specifically, and people then will start becoming there for the content, not for you as a creator. And that's what I wanted to avoid. That's why I always try to make um, stuff that shows you a bit of what I want to make. That's why I do like, I do script fills and tell stories like that. But then I also write stuff so you get a sense of what I, what stories I like to tell and write myself. And then I do the gaming video so I have a chance to talk with you guys a little bit. And then, you know, I, I try to branch these things out 
to be able to connect with you guys in a multifaceted way. Because I think that's what you deserve. I think that's a more human way to interact. I think it makes me feel more sane, frankly, because I don't feel like I'm stuck doing the same exact thing over and over just in order to drum up more views. Because I know when I'm lining up content, I, I post stuff sometimes. And I literally, before I even click public on the video, I go, I know this is not going to do numbers. I know it's not going to do numbers, and I'm fucking fine with that because this horror audio I'm going to post is not going to get 100,000 views. And I'm okay with that because I think artistically it's really good. I think the story is interesting. I think a lot of the, my existing listeners, I think you're all going to love it. That's my criteria for what I post and share with you guys is stuff that I'm proud of and that I think you will be interested in, you know? That's why, like, the whole, like, Mr. Beast logic of, like, every video needs to be optimized for increasing success. That's why hyper-editing and, uh, what is it, like, um... Uh, oh, there's a term for it when you edit things in a certain way to make it so it's hard to look away from, where it's like retention editing. That's what it is, where you very deliberately are constantly having shit on screen that way you can never look away. And I hate that. And I feel like that is what we're seeing as things try to get more optimized and less personal. That's why YouTube as a whole, I feel like, has gotten much less personal and much more corporate. And that's why most channels that do well feel like businesses now and i don't want to do that i want i want to be at the point where if i if they if this channel continues to do well over time and i have whatever 100,000 subscribers 200,000 whatever scale of success or popularity i still want this to be a place where you don't know exactly what i'm going to post next i might post something fucking weird i might post something you're not expecting i might do you know i might pivot and do some strange things cuz i think that's cool i like when creators that i know and have been following for a long time branch out into their own little fixations because I think that represents them as a human and that's what I'm really there for. So anyway, there's my little rant on content and creating and all that brought on by a discussion about you know, AI and this kind of stuff which, this anyway, this game, it's funny this is what I like about it. This game is so simple and it's two endings. It's like a five minute game and to be clear, this was a free game. It's one of the early ones I believe that this, uh, this guy made but I still love it because these games always get me talking and they get me interested in talking about um, I, I don't know. I think the, he's, the way he tells these stories have an interesting view on humans, on technology, on society. They have something underneath them that makes them very intriguing compared to a lot of other psychological kind of games like this. And that's why I'm, I'm going to keep playing them. I'm going to keep finding what he makes purely for, I'm, you know, for the sake of seeing what conversation they spark because they always seem to get my brain going in a way that gets me excited and I love sharing that with you. And then I love hearing what your thoughts are on these topics as well, you know, and varying things up to be able to have some more serious conversations with you now and again like this. So anyway, let me know what you guys thought of that. And again, let me know if you have any thoughts on that, what you guys like more, if you like seeing creators stay kind of in their niche, if you really prefer that, or is, is that something you enjoy when you see creators branch out a little bit or maybe a better question would be and I'm kind of curious for my own sake because I'm always on this side of the creativity or, or I should say like the the creator or content creator dynamic as I'm, as I'm on the posting side of it is if someone only posts one specific niche do you follow them for their personality or do you feel like you follow them for the content itself and you don't feel very connected to who they are because you don't know anything about them versus other creators you follow. I'm curious if you if you if there's a notable difference to you and if you feel that in the way you interact with different creators that you may enjoy. Cuz I, I think I do personally, you know, I'm curious if that's how other people feel about it. So anyway, something to think about. Um this was interesting and I will be back soon. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and listening. My name is Dominic and I will see you next time. Bye.